Thanks everybody for coming. <coughs> Start the invocation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet and conduct matters of business today. We pray for our agenda that we may use all our resources wisely. Please guide us in all our decisions today that we may be successful in our efforts to best serve our city in the most cost-effective way. Father, we thank you as always for being our source of guidance today. Let us all be mindful of this holy week and what it means to each of us. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. behalf of a constituent but also myself uh, my utility bill and uh, before I use a drop of water to flush the toilet or to drink and before I turn a light on my bill is $47.25 you add to that the, uh, the uh, recycling fee which is another dollar ninety so you're you know almost forty nine twenty five um, there's a lot of lower plus five percent, right? Yeah, plus five percent, sure, for the city. Okay. Okay. So so we're fifty dollars easily before we use anything. Uh, there's a lot of you know lower income people that, that live in our community and uh, people with fixed incomes and some of those making decisions whether uh, you know to buy food uh, or uh, turn on the lights. Uh, I just asking tonight. Uh, I know I, it, it's unfortunate. The, the uh, stormwater issue, you know, didn't pass by just a few votes. I feel like that maybe if our minimums weren't so high, that might have had a better chance. Um, you know, just something to think about. And your talented group of individuals, you've got a, a talented finance director, and I just ask if you, I know it's like the wrong time of year, and I know your justifications behind the minimums, because, you know, we're looking at bonds tonight, but uh, looking for guys to uh, possibly take a look at those minimums, uh, rolling those back and recover with some of the people who do actually use you know, larger amounts of uh, energy and, and maybe more efficient uh, with a charge, you know, for the, uh, the things that we're actually using, the water and the electric, and, and back the minimums down some if we could. But I thank you for your time. Appreciate your comment. Do we want to, I mean, you want to address that? I mean, I know we've we've adjusted that component upwards, and that's, as I understand it, to meet what's being done nationwide and also our own circumstance. The short answer is that there is no short answer. What Council on Jobs touched on is the longest running debate, uh, the economics versus the political sensitivities of how utilities assess rates. I mean, it's, it's been a debate or a discussion analysis in the utility industry for as long as there has been a utility industry. Our rates and all of our funds are designed to reflect the cost of service of each of those funds. We've had outside consultants, national rate experts, and all, all of our utilities uh, look at our cost of business, the fixed costs and the variable costs, and try to recover those fixed costs on a customer charge, the variable costs on a consumption charge. Um, it is, is, is why they're assessed as they are, and our rates are pretty close to the cost of service for all of our utilities. It's it's a challenging it's it's a dilemma, um, honestly, that this board, this the previous boards and this board management have faced at this utility and all the others around the around the world, frankly. Uh, the truth is that we can sell thirty percent fewer gallons of water and our fixed costs, you know, costs of management, costs of you know, appreciation of the pipes in the system wouldn't change much at all. Um, Cost three to thousand gallons of water is around a dollar twenty-five ish, dollar thirty-five somewhere in there. Chemical pumping cost, you know. So we try to recover 
a lot of that cost through a markup on that. There's, 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 there's something to be said for not encouraging people not to use water. Uh, you know, I mean, but there's a certain amount sure. that you need to have for proper sanitation and all that. So that, that aspect comes into play there. But we have talked about <coughs> different, you know, looking at rate structures and trying to be, you know, I know, I know there are, you know, throughout the country there's a lot of different ways of, of doing this. So uh, there's no perfect thing. There's, a, there's no free lunch. Sure. Um, I, I, I would step. say that our, our rates do reflect the cost of service as we've been led, you know, or understand the, the nature of our system and the peak demands and all of our utilities. The consultants look at our peak by customer class, consumption of electricity and water and wastewater. And we can we can try to put the uh, you know the bulk on our bigger customers too. You know, not if we're going to try to attract business. I understand. No, I mean, and, and do such would violate. Like, when was the last time we had a cost of service study? Electric fund was 2015. Water was, I believe, 2017, 18. Right. Since I was here, so it was probably 20 in the last few years. We had the water and sewer, water and sewer, I believe, was combined. Is 2015 considered recent? Well, we, we, when I say we, I mean Bob, our general manager, and I, I think we kind of got a five-year rolling window, so we're up for electric. You know, about a year or so. Okay. There, there's no perfect or no you know, hard and fast rule on yeah, how to do that. Drastic changes to your system or your customer base. That's a good idea because it, but when, it, when it gets four or five years, no matter what you do, it kind of gets a little stale. The 17 the to 1,800 customers every every month that are late with, with their bill, it, is that reflection of what uh, customers <coughs> have? Dawson is saying that would be a reflection of uh, a variety of things. One would be, for one thing, the, the, the number that's presented in the board packet is a number I come up with, and that's how many delinquent notices were mailed during the month. So, in total, it's not reflective of a point in time, it's more of a total over that month, how many customers at, at a given time were mailed a delinquent notice. Uh, there's a variety of things that play into that, consumer behavior, uh, education about the late fee, the size of the late fee, you know, there's a variety of factors at play there. Yeah. We, we end up disconnecting uh, far more of our smaller, you know, around say 200 accounts a month, which is still many and it's an unfortunate experience for those that it affects, but it's a lot less than the 1,700 to 2,000 delinquent accounts. That stays constant every month. No. It does. Uh, and Heath would probably tell you, even before we had big electric rate increases and everything else, that number was still was still the same. So it reflects something besides the size of the bill. It, yeah, but there's I, a study in the, the electric. Those rates have stayed the, the lowest over that five years. Uh, I recently did analysis. Else. Yeah, electric rates for the, for the average residential customer are up around 1% a year the last eight years, yeah. I believe, which yeah, would be a lower order of magnitude than many other things we experience in mind. And Almost all of that was on the customer charge, on the meter charge, right? I believe. So. I think we actually reduced the kilowatt hour slightly, increased the customer charge, which was the recommendations of the right. of the study. And yeah. it's always any time we were so. any time we were adjusting rates, at least in that department, we were adjusting the meter charge. Yep. And if we adjusted it down and then and then said you had to buy a minimum amount of of a product, electric or something like that, then you know it, it's sure. six. One half dozen <coughs> of another, I guess. Basically. So it, it's definitely about a concern. It's something that's if I forgot, if I left anything out, he's yeah. I, I think it's a fine balance or it's a <laughs> balancing act. I mean, you want to collect appropriate amount of revenue for your expenses. And, you know, obviously, if you lower the meter charge, then the usage charge goes up. And a lot of times, when you're comparing, when you're comparing your electric rates to somebody else's, you only compare the usage charge. They don't compare that meter charge, and that data gets left out difficult to compare, but it's a balancing act on what's what's appropriate for residents versus industrial. Sure. And, um, we can emphasize certain things when we have a cost of service study, say we do one in another couple of years. Obviously the inputs change versus what they were five years ago and the feelings of the community or the board and the management staff can lead things a different direction. Okay. Thank you. Good discussion. Tough question right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> At least he 
get an ask first and forget the bill. I believe it's already been paid. Regular reports, general manager. Yeah. Um, before I get started, I want to introduce Rodney. You guys met him before. Uh, Rodney Spires uh, from the West Water Plan. He's been an operator down there since 2006. Um, he had an article written about him in Wastewater Treatment Operator Magazine. Um, we got this fancy plaque back here that we ordered that shows his, his article on display. Also. <laughs> um, so <coughs> we're going to put this up at the Wastewater Plan for everybody to see. And Rodney's going to get one to take home. And He's going to need several nails because it is heavy <laughs> to place uh, at a time and have for keepsake. But really just appreciate the, the work that he's doing down there and most of his contacts. And, and part of the reason for the article is because of the volunteer work he does on the Missouri uh, Water Environment Association's Lab Practices Committee. And that's all volunteer. He doesn't have to go do that. Um, and he chooses to. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to go over my report, I'm going to be a little bit brief because we have a lot on the agenda and a lot more significant items. So I'm going to try to run through this really quick. Uh, stormwater spring cleanup day is Saturday the 27th. Um, I believe uh, you just meet at the Y Men's Pavilion at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 8 a.m. If you want to help set up. Yeah. Uh, it's between 9 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and basically, you'll get an assignment and we'll be on. Uh, in the electric department, uh, you notice in the report we unfortunately dropped below our goal of four nines this month for the rolling uh, availability rates to customers. Uh, first time we dropped below that in several months, I believe, over a year. Uh, most of that can be attributed to that south side sub outage that had you know, the whole the entire sub out for, for a period of time. Um, so we'll do our best to get that back up in the next couple of months. Um, we still have the flood prevention preparations underway as the river continues to stay you know, in the low 20s. Uh, so for a while, we were doing daily inspections of the pump house on Wilson Street. When it gets to 24 feet, we have to do that. But now, you know, 22, 23 foot level, we can just uh, monitor things weekly and be it and remotely. So we're still kind of on edge on that and continue to monitor the river and its predictions, uh, just, like, just like the bank of the city does. Um, for the water crew, they got tentative plans to perform fire hazard testing in the month of June. Um, we'll, we'll continue notifying you at board meetings. And other platforms that gets closer, but uh, tentatively the entire month of June we'll be doing fire hydrant testing. Uh, we are not doing a chlorine burnout or anything of that nature during this day. It's just normal, normal flow testing and at the same time we'll do some flow testing. Um, about the water plant, I, I mentioned in my report a couple different things that they're doing up there to uh, improve efficiency and, and save money as well. I'm not saying enough about how the water plant has kind of made a complete 360 from two or three years ago. And it can all be attributed to the existing operators. Um, the two examples I gave in, in the report where they, they made some repairs to a, a machine, about a $15,000 machine, uh, that automatically adjusts their coagulant level instead of them having to manually do it. Basically, all their efforts to make this work, and it's a much more efficient way of adding coagulant. And so far, we're seeing savings just in the first couple of months. <coughs> savings and lower lower TOC, so higher quality water added to the price. Um, and they did the same thing with their automated uh, filter backwash thing. So I just want to compliment them. I know none of them are here, but I want to compliment their efforts and efforts on that. Um, in the uh, IT department. The reason it's kind of in the IT is because Matthew Jones takes care of our water metering system. We finally fell below 200 uh, failures of water meters per month for the first time since October of 18. Uh, and again, this can all be contributed to, to Matthew's efforts as well as uh, Gene and the three servicemen that take care of that on a daily basis. Um, if you remember, I right, had some turnover in that department and it kind of took us a while to get to get things going the right 
that direction, but we are got it down to a manageable number now. Uh, and then the last item I have is Barnes and McDonald was here uh, to do a vulnerability assessment uh, and a cyber security assessment during the month. If you remember right, that was the free free assessment we, we got uh, of the electrical system only. Um, the results are pending. Um, but Matthew was here during the whole during the whole assessment and he said the the results they the verbal feedback he got was very positive, in particular on the cybersecurity <coughs> side. Uh, we probably are going to have some recommendations for physical security. Um, but thank you to Matthew for taking care of that and, and making sure making sure uh, our cybersecurity stuff is taken care of. If you have me thinking twice about opening anything now. That's <laughs> That means you're learning. Like, wow. yeah. I was Hopefully you're applying that in your dead. personal life as well. I, that's what I'm talking about. I was just talking to Rodney. I got an invoice for that black and I wouldn't even open it. <laughs> they had to send it to me three different times. <laughs> and that's all I have unless there are questions uh, about our report. Are you going to do the operations too or, or was that kind of a combined that was combined okay <laughs> so yeah. and i know there's a lot of the reporting we're up the last couple of months on water loss like 24 percent now um i don't know what that can be i know we, we, we have an ongoing thing. thing it's 20 percent but yeah the last two months were worse so i just wondered if there was a yeah i think abe's um rolling six months rolling six months thing shows an average of six months right it does and it's been Within 22.6 to 23.0, just the rolling six months. Yeah. No way to get runs to see if it actually trends up or just two months worth. Is all right. Well, yeah. Good I mean, news. Yeah. Just pretty that stood out to me, and then when you talked about the the meters getting better. Uh, yeah. But that was some, that's an issue we really with at some point. <coughs> yeah, well the new metering project will, will solve that. Mm -hmm. It well, doesn't go up 20% as a result. <laughs> okay, financial report. You two should have one of the exact same outfit two months in a row as the first time for you. <laughs> <laughs> Something to <laughs> not to be vain, to be so good. <laughs> Uh, I'll try to be like Eve, I'll try to be brief. Uh, the first page, of course, is the balance sheet. Uh, total assets are almost unchanged from last month. That are up about 3% from a year ago. The next page is March compared to budget. March is company-wide. Net income is about $38,000, about 19% more than budget, driven by higher than budget revenues and all funds, more than offsetting higher than budget purchase power costs in the electric fund. The next page is March compared to last year. March is company-wide, net income is about $171,000, more than the same month last year, due to a combination of higher operating revenues and lower operating expenses compared to the same month last year. The next page back is fiscal year date compared to budget. Amazingly, we're nine months into the new fiscal year. Time just seems to fly faster and faster. We're not nine months in, net income is about 11% below budget. This is being driven entirely by the, by the electric fund. As the water and sewer funds, net income in total is about 30% more than budgeted. The electric fund's results reflect unfavorable budget variances in operating revenues as well as power supply costs. Uh, these items are within, within 1 to 4 percent respectively of their budget amounts, but in total they're causing an over $740,000 unfavorable variance in net income. The next page back is fiscal year date compared to the same time period last year. Company-wide net income is about 21 percent less than the same time period last year. Due to the same factors uh, previously mentioned, in the year date comparison to budget, as well as the significant storm relief efforts the electric line crew performed last year that weren't duplicated this year. Results in the water and sewer funds are significantly improved from last year to date, driven by increases in operating revenues, more than offsetting increases in operating expenses. Uh, in summary, my takeaway, uh, though our company-wide results are below budget year to date, we still have a few months left to go in the fiscal year. In my opinion, the financial results are acceptable. The next page is our cash targets. Uh, cash reserves are steady. <coughs> cash reserves are steady. Uh, we will have an updated cash reserves formula from our consultants uh, around mid-May to early June, as early as they could deliver that. So a bit late for budget season this time around, but uh, definitely time for the mid-year uh, relook at the water rates. 
next page is back of the dashboard. Um, I continue to be generally happy with the, the overall direction of our cash reserves, of course, company-wide net income as a percentage of budget and unit sales compared to their five-year averages. A pretty steady month, good, easy one to report, good one to have in the books. You guys have any questions? I've got one. Um, what was a uh, average temperature this March compared to last March? <laughs> <laughs> I have that data, so it's not in front of me. All right. Colder? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember. It's a higher standard it, deviation. It, I can yeah, tell you okay. <laughs> it's, it's easy to have a few cold days uh, affect one's perception of the whole month. I, I, I do track that uh, actual average temperature compared to historical average, but I don't look at it without having it in front of me, Steph, I'm sorry. Oh, don't worry. I, I could tell you. I'm just curious. <laughs> I, I could either tell you me last the meeting or text you. Oh, yeah, that's great. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for, again, sucking me and making me feel. I challenged him to come up with a question he couldn't answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Stump the nerd around and me <laughs> that you me. <laughs> if there are no further questions, <laughs> I'll re retire to my nerdery. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Any project report? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're closer to closing out the SRF project. Um, we did the tank uh, vent modification last week at the Southside Tank. That information has been submitted to DNR for their review, and hopefully before the end of the month we can get the paperwork completed and that turned into them so we can get that project closed out. So. Um, water treatment plant project. Um, Submittals are moving along. Um, they were having a little bit of a problem getting uh, their excavation plan um, completed and approved. Um, that should be approved as of today. And so they'll, they'll get with their shoring contractor and they hope to have uh, uh, shoring materials showing up on site within the next week or so. And then it'll be a, a long process of, of excavating material and then storing, uh, installing the shoring as they have planned. So it looks like it could probably be toward the end of end of May before they, they start pouring concrete at the bottom of their excavation. Um, the reason being it's, it's approximately 20 feet deep, so they had to go through some hoops and, and whatnot to get stuff approved. And it's um, pretty close to the timeline you had for it. It's, it's lagging a little bit behind what they had in their initial um, um, shot at, at the, um, the schedule. Um, they basically used up their buffer that they had built later on but this has allowed them to get more of their submittals approved, and so hopefully they won't run into any any further delays as, as the project moves forward. So, uh, I know deep excavations kind of mentioned to me that they're they're aware of the construction of the building from the 1924 drawings, but they're not aware of the subgrade underneath the building. So that's kind of their yeah, there's, difficulty. There's some plans to it, there's but there's not you know compaction. Um, of what the, uh, the sub base was. Um, the footings on one of the basins extend way out beyond the basin wall, and so they had to be conscientious of that and just finding somebody that wanted to seal a drawing that said, if you do this, it'll be okay. <laughs> they, they were pretty leery of it, so they, they had to talk to quite a few different different people that were willing to take on that liability. So, um, One thing with that project, um, there's an opportunity here to replace the um, sodium hypochlorite tanks that uh, were installed when the, when the hypochlorite went into use back in 2009. Um, they estimate approximately a 20 year life on those tanks. Um, we do have a price of, of $70,000 to replace those. Um, it would be easier now before we put the, the shell of the building up around it. I'm not saying we can't do it in 10 years, but there is the opportunity now to do it. I just, I don't know what Gerald's feeling is on this because I know we are up against you know, trying to spend as least amount of money as possible, but the only other um, minor change order that, that I know of that, that will be coming is for some additional rebar that was missed between what was in the spec and what was on the plan, and that's going to cost anywhere between five and ten thousand dollars. So. When does that decision need to be made? Uh, the sooner the better. I mean, I, I, I'm not looking for formal approval. If you want us to move forward in that direction, I can go ahead and get that started. Um, I just didn't want to give them approval to do something or, or tell them no when 
That's not what the board and we didn't want to be surprised by a change order six months from now. Yeah. I mean this is this is truly optional where the rebar stuff, I mean we have to do it to adhere to the not to this way the the G A C project. Mm -hmm. nope. Is there any scrap value or reuse value? Not really. No, they're fire device tanks, right? Mm -hmm. Just a matter of replacing now or doing ten years of the building around it. I mean there will be a door. I mean we will have to bring in a a, uh, a temporary tank at that time to feed the uh, product while we're tearing out the old tanks and putting the new ones in. Um, again the building will make it a little bit more challenging. You can't just take it out and one move with the crane. So the new building will have removable panels in the ceiling? Or? No. No, because they kind of help support the, the tip up um, um, precast uh, exterior walls. So, I mean, it will have a garage door in the end if the, if the tank can fit here. It's just you have to work around one tank to get to the other. You said 70 for both of them? That is 70 for both of them, yes. That is your recommendation? <laughs> You're bringing it to us. Yeah. I'm just it's, bringing it to you. I mean, it's okay. It, it, it's it was safety, easier now. Is it a safety factor or not? I mean, hypochlorite is. <coughs> it's not really a safety <coughs> issue at this point. It's more of a convenience factor. We either pay $70,000 now while the building's removed and we're already using a temporary storage tank, or we pay ninety dollars or $100,000 oh. in a couple of years oh. to, to do it. Oh. And ten, 10 years to do it. Because now we're going to have to bring in another temporary storage tank. We're going to have the additional uh, constraints of the building. Yeah, and we're not having any issues with tanks now. If we were, we would. Yeah, we, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, we would already problem. be trying to replace them. Yeah, if you, this, of course, the staff at Water Plant and, and George are all for, hey, when we got down, let's, let's replace these. One less thing you have to worry about in 10 years. And we start to clock over on 20 years. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, the new tanks would be constructed a little bit different than mm -hmm. the current tanks are dual wall tanks because of the UV protection and also the heat tracing that's, that's between the shells of the tanks because of, they're outside right now. Mm -hmm. With this project, they'll be placed inside so it'll be a single wall tank. Is that 3%? Uh, 12 to 15. 12. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Hold up any better inside? Tanks hold up better? It's still a 20 years life because you're. It's more the interior of the tank. It is what's um, what's being degraded because of the yeah. material inside. Yeah. I mean, it's similar to our fluoride tanks or our uh, um, coagulant tanks. Sure. It, it was a money saving thing to put them outside to begin with. So for a building around it, so it's just kind of convenient that this building's going to be right there. Yeah. Well, I'd say, you know, find out some firm numbers. And I mean, that get back 70 to was, the, that's, 70 that's was the number. Likely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I heard one in favor. Anybody else? Yeah, I think I'm in favor. Okay. Yeah, I'm also. All right. And we, so can we, uh, we can bring a two-part we'll, change we'll, order next month. And, for all yeah, we'll, we'll, it'll be all incorporated in another yeah. change order that gets um, approved at a later date. But I will find some savings somewhere else to pay for it. There may be some savings, <coughs> provided they don't hit rock when they're doing excavation. For the, <coughs> um, some rock excavation was built in. So early that I think mm -hmm. we're going to talk about some savings so. later in the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just was told today that the uh, contractor is starting up at the Warren Bear tank. Um, he's moving material in on site, um, waiting for the rain to come through later this week, and then his media to show up on site. And then, if you can get two to three weeks of good weather, he should have that project pretty well knocked out. So. Um, with the river level up on the downtown area, we were able to get some good information and manhole, manholes, um, elevations of the sewer, and uh, relation to the river. And so, we're working with track on that to correlate that to some repairs that we had planned and we hope to complete once the river goes back down. Are there any improvements on that with the new manhole covers? We haven't got them all in, that's the problem. Uh -huh. um, we, were, we intended to get them in last
last fall, but the river was up at that time. Um, we did pour them in-house back in January, but we just haven't had a time, an opportunity to get them out there. It'll either frozen, so we couldn't get in there to dig around the manholes, or it was flooded. So, so still about 13 million high max per um, month, I guess. They're still having a high max, but that was up around the 25-foot river. Right now, they're running about an eight, so it's down from what it had been in the past. So we're making improvements. So we are making improvements. Um, the closer we get to 20, the less of a problem it is. Um, we think some of it is um, just the hydrostatic pressure against the manhole walls. Through popping um, manhole lids, we were able to find some sources of I and I that weren't visible at, at lower river, river levels. So we're making progress. So. And then on um, the Surrey Hill project area, um, we're going to discuss some repairs later on. But uh, met with uh, Brian of Amigo today, and he got preliminary results back to us on on the capacity study for that sewer main. It looks like due to the, uh, the grade of a certain area there along um, Sam Ray's Avenue that we may be actually backing water up causing the problem. So we're going to do some further investigation on that and hopefully have something to come to come with the PU in the future. So. Maybe you need a sewer line maybe too flat. It's too flat for the volume of water we're trying to get to there. So if you make it bigger or drop it more. Looking at that, there's there's two sewer mains there. We may be able to shift some of the flow, or look at an alternative route to get it away from that flat spot. <coughs> That's all I have. Good, good. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, let's move on to Proposition S discussion. <coughs> So feel free to jump in anytime and same with Matt and Andrea if you have comments, just jump in anytime. Um, really what we're trying to do is gather data uh, from you guys, uh, from the city department heads, from city council, from customers. Um, that way we can come up with a new plan to try to achieve the funding we think is necessary. So um, that being said, of course the proposition uh, as April 2nd did not pass by, by 12 votes. I kind of give you the voting talents right there. So, unfortunately, that uh, was not approved by voters, but, but we're encouraged how close the outcome was. Um, it appears the community sees the need for more more funding and the associated improvements uh, for our aging and family infrastructure. So, even though the proposition didn't pass, during our public education meetings, um, we, we learned a lot. And I listed out several of the things we learned here some of the questions people had, some of the repeated concerns they had, and maybe, maybe you guys have more that you've heard or something that, that you've heard emphasize. Um, so let's just kind of read through these, and if you want to discuss any one of them, just, just stop me at any time. Uh, will renters be charged a stormwater fee, or will the property owners pay the fee? Uh, 